Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today in this video I'm going to give you a quick first impressions look at Fujifilm's X-RAW Studio. So if you haven't seen this before, this is basically Fuji's new RAW conversion software that uses a connected camera to actually do the conversion. So basically what it's doing is it's using the image processing engine in your camera to do the conversions. So at the moment it's only supported by a couple of cameras. Um, so at the moment I'm using an X-Pro2, which I have connected via USB. So as you can see, we have it it's connected to my computer here via USB. Um, and basically uh, what it's doing is using the camera's onboard processor to do the conversions. So there was kind of a lot of hype about this application when it came out, but um, for one thing or another, I just haven't had a chance to kind of test it properly. So uh, I have it open here now. So let's just give you a quick look at it. So basically you have your kind of interface here and over here you have your source image folder. Um, so basically you select your uh, folder for all of images. So I've already kind of uh, search for ones and so I've just picked a folder here of uh, photos from my expo shoot that I've used in the past. Now one thing I will say about this is in terms of interface design this isn't the best as you can see this is a tiny little window here and you can't resize it so you're kind of limited in what you can do. Um, it's also kind of a bit slow so like if I click on a different folder here as you can see nothing's happening. Still nothing's happening. So sometimes you're kind of wondering, is this not working? Oh, oh no, wait, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little clunky, um, but then it's it's a free application, so you can't really complain. Um, well, you can't complain, and I will complain. Um, <laughs> but in terms of interface design, it's, it's probably what you would expect from a, a camera manufacturer. Uh, if you look at software from a lot of the manufacturers, even those that are often um, designed by third parties, uh, these generally aren't great. Uh, so, but I mean, it's fine, it does the job. So basically, uh, let me just pick an image here. So I'm picking a raw file and what it's doing is it's loading. So you can see we have the little loading sign here. So the first thing you'll notice is the preview images are actually quite soft. When you click on it first, it's actually fine and then it goes soft. So over here in our main interface, we have, uh, you can zoom in one to one. Um, and then zoom back out or you can zoom and then you've got different options here and then over here you have your controls so basically what you have on this is the same controls that you would get on the camera for the most part um, there's a few other things you can change I think um, I'm not 100% certain on that but you basically have the options that you would have say if you were using the Q menu in your camera to change the kind of the picture profile settings so uh, and you also have exposure compensation as well. So I can change the white balance. So we can use like say a custom temperature. Or we can set it to daylight. So what you'll notice on this as well is when you make a change, you change your option and then it sends it to the camera and it processes. Now it only takes a second, but you do have to wait for it to refresh for each option. Um, it's not like, say, if you were working in Lightroom or Capture One, so you drag a slider and it updates immediately. Um, so the other options we can change are, we can change the picture profile. So we can use any of the ones that the camera supports. So in this case, because I shot with an X-Pro2, I have pretty much all the current ones. So that's changing it to Velvia, as you can see, that's quite different. Um, you can change the shadow and highlight tone options. So Again, if I wanted to bring up the shadows, I'd set this to say minus two. And as you can see, that brightness of the shadows a good bit. In fact, that's a bit too much, so I'm just gonna set this to minus one. And you can do things like I can change the color. So if you think that that's maybe a little oversaturated, we can just drop this down a bit. Um, and you can turn the grain effect on and off. And you can set the color space, sRGB or Adobe RGB. I'm just gonna leave that. Um, then we can change the noise reduction options and the sharpness options. So that's just uh, 
one image. Let me just pick a different image and go through a few more options here just to kind of give you an idea. So again, as you can see, this takes a little while to load. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's... I just find the application overall a little clunky. But again, it's not it's not awful. It's certainly not as bad as Silky Pix. Okay, so here's just another image. So one of the things that I want to say about this is... I personally would not use this for raw conversion because it's just, as I said, it's a bit clunky and you're kind of limited to what you can do in the software uh, or what you could do in the camera. But it does have one really useful function. And I think for that alone, it's worth downloading to use this. And that is, it lets you visualize what the in-camera options are. So for example, if you're ever confused about how the highlight tone options work or the shadow tone options work, this gives you a really good way to see just how they do work uh, and you can kind of see the differences between different modes. So for example, here I have the sh highlight tone set to minus one. So if I set this to minus two, you can see what the difference that might make. And in this case, that's not making a huge amount of difference. Um, but say, for example, the shadow tone, if I set this to plus four, you can see that's just totally blacks out the shadows, which we don't want. Or I could set it to plus one. So this is probably not a great example. Let me just pick a better, better one. Okay, so let me just look at this image for a second and just kind of show you a few things. So again, uh, this isn't a particularly brilliant image. I'm just using this to highlight just kind of the different functions. So again, I have the highlight on set to minus one here. So what does setting it to plus option mean? Well, it should actually brighten the highlights. So if we do this, you can see the difference that's having on the highlights. And again, the shadow tones, if I bring it up, if you want to make your image more contrasty, or if you want to lower to bring up the shadows, you can kind of see the effect that has. Also too, if I zoom in from to uh, one to one, so you can see things like what the difference in noise reduction and sharpness would make. So I have that set to minus one at the moment. Normally when I shoot, I have it set to minus two, which may seem counterintuitive, but in my opinion, I prefer to softer, I prefer to sharpen it afterwards because um, you get better results than the in-camera sharpening. But if I was to say set this to plus one, which I know some people like to do, see, in my opinion, that is now, you've got kind of halos and stuff going on here, so that's a little over sharpened. Uh, like if I was to set this to plus four, now this will look ridiculous. As you can see, well, some people probably like that, but if you look at the what's going on in the background here, it's like just horrible over sharpening halos and stuff going on. So again, it just kind of lets you visualize what would you would see in camera. Okay, and then I can zoom back out. So again, this isn't this is a particularly great example. So let me just do one more example. I'm going to find something better. So again, this will just take a minute to load. Okay, so again, here is another shot, and we sh I shot this originally in Provia. I had shadow tone set to minus one. Um, I'm going to set this to plus one. See, so that darkens it a bit too much. So maybe we'll just set that to zero. And. Our highlight tone was set to minus one, so we'll see if this softens our highlights a bit. Yeah, so you can see on the tree there that kind of brought stuff back a little bit. But again, overall, it's not great. Um, if I set this to Velvia, I might bring it up a bit. Okay, so, I mean, that just shows you the limitations of this. Like, if I was to open this in some other piece of software, I'd be able to do much more to this. But if you want to work with the JPEGs, this gives you a really useful way of seeing what the different options do and kind of changing your options afterwards. It's the same as if you were kind of processing them in the camera, um, but, but this gives you a visual interface for it. Okay, so once you've done that, what you then do is hit convert. So this will convert the image and wait for it. We go through the lovely process of reloading everything and then you will see we now have this converted version down here. So this saves it to a JPEG to the folder. Um, if you see, if I right click on this, all I can options I can have are copy conversion profile. There's no way for me to reveal this in the finder. So I can't, I can't find this basically. I'd have to look at the file name and then manually go find it. As I said, there are limitations to this software and in fairness, it's version 1.0. So they may well add some additional tools to it in the future. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it's an okay application. It's kind of, 
it's useful if you have a use for it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, I don't think it will replace your raw application uh, unless you really, really like the Fuji JPEGs. Um, even if you do use it, you're probably going to need to use it with some additional software. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you found this useful and uh, I have a kind of an in-depth text review on my blog as well, which this video will be linked in. So if you're already reading it, then you've already seen it. Um, if not, you'll find the link in the description on below on YouTube. Um, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time.